the name Mike will not will not well, either name <laughs> or will not <laughs> might might not be a dirty word in Canada right now, but maybe it should be not because he's one of the darkest, most incendiary stand up comics in the country, and not because he's also one of the most profane. I'm saying not nothing. this morning. I'm, I'm yeah. holding back. It's no, early. it's because of the character he plays on an acclaimed new TV comedy called The Foundation. Mike has the role of Michael Valmont Selkirk, the unscrupulous president of a charitable foundation he won in a divorce settlement. Mike Wilmot is a past recipient of two Canadian Comedy Awards and has numerous acting credits in some of Canada's funniest films and TV shows, including It's All Gone Pete Tong, The Newsroom, and Corner Gas. Mike Wilmot joins me live in Studio Q, in case you didn't already know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, Hello, I'm, sir. How are you, man? Nice to have you here. It's nice to be here. It's very, very early. It's really not that early. Oh, for me, it's very, very early. <laughs> yeah. And can we have more pictures of Rick Mercer in this building by any chance? <laughs> we could actually yeah. have when, more. Next year, yeah. we're going to actually just rebuild the whole building, and it'll just be Rick Mercer's head. <laughs> just a giant Rick Mercer head, and you, you come in through the mouth. This isn't sort of some, some sort of comedic rivalry. No, no. I, Surely. I think he's, I, think he's a, I love him. You I, love Rick. I, I do. Yeah. And, and anyone that's met him. You just don't want to see so much of his head. No, I, no, more. I believe I said more. I'd like to see more <laughs> of Rick Mercer's head. <laughs> what do you feel like? Like when you see Rick Mercer's head everywhere, what does it, what does I, it make I, you feel? I feel as though I'm not doing enough. <laughs> right, he's a very successful man very, and works very hard. And, deserves and, every and, bit and of he's his he really is brilliant. Yeah, okay, well, you're known also as one of the funniest stand-up comics in Canada. Uh, well, yeah, but that's uh, written down there. No, I, now what's written here is now that the the reviews for the foundation. Uh, since it launched a few weeks ago, I've been very strong. Yeah, we, yeah, I was very, uh, very happy with that. Well, what's it like to receive such praise as a comedic actor after touring as a stand-up all these years? Well, luckily, the uh, the the character is a, a rotund, gruff guy who's not that bright. So I'm not really it's acting. Not rotund. Well, rotund. Re- He's relatively you. Rotund. You're, you're I'm wearing a fat suit for the show. <laughs> let's just say that. <laughs> Uh, tell us more about him. Go ahead. Yeah. You no, know, he's just you know he's just a gruff kind of knob. I, I like the fact that he's like uh, he's not a cutie poo Canadian character that we're all used to. You know, it's 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 it's, a, it's a, he's a nasty fella. I want to get into that. Tell us a little bit about what makes him nasty, so people haven't seen the foundation. It, he's desperate. <laughs> he's like a cornered animal. You know, he's he's not dangerous until he's cornered, and he, he's yeah, he just get he's like the Flashman character from those novels. Or the, the Royal Flash, the pitcher. He's just a he's just a wonderful coward. You're you're saying this, I mean, as if you 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 revel in playing a character like this, not a nice guy. Oh, it's tremendous to play evil. What tell us tell us about that? Why? I, I think because I think if if you, if you play someone that's out and out evil, if you if when when the director says cut and you actually go, oh my god, how how did I even say that? It makes for a peaceful day. You've, you've got it all out of your system. Birds <laughs> land on me when I'm done. You know, I, right. I'm, I'm free now. I'm right. free. So, so Michael, uh, craftily titled, his name is Michael, not Mike. So not we know Mike. it's not you. And Velmont, not Wilmont. <laughs> right, yeah, so right. it's, it's a right. huge departure. Nothing to do with you. Not a, nothing whatsoever. Right. Not even no. a shade of your character. No, not a, no. Your I'm, I'm, personal I'm, side. If, if you yeah. were to know me, I am a sweet, uh, benevolent human. Well, <laughs> I want to get into some of the implications of playing this kind of character on a Canadian TV show. But uh, first of all, did you always intend to become an actor? Is this a... No. A, no. I, uh, I, I, I was a stand-up, uh, still am, proudly. Uh, and I was in Britain. Uh, and uh, Mike uh, Douse, who made the, the, the Pete Tong movie, yeah. uh, got me into to acting. And again, it was just... You have trouble saying the word. Yeah, it, yeah. it hurts. It does hurt. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I, I've really enjoyed it with Mike. Because, you know, he dumbs down the direction. Like, he, he actually moves my face with his hands. <laughs> right. And, that, and then, I can, then I can act. So, so is it a natural graduation for some, or uh, should I say, is it seen as a graduation? Is it seen as the next step for a stand-up to get an acting? Yeah, game? for many, yeah. I, I just, uh, uh, I, I found it, uh, I, I always wanted just to be a success as a stand-up. But uh, you get bored after a few years. <laughs> of doing stand up you know it's just uh, you know i travel quite uh, you know quite a lot but uh, this has just been a great departure just it, it makes stand up sweeter how so because it's uh, it's very long boring process what is uh, the acting right and uh, stand up's immediate yeah. So it, you get the immediate a, validation of the audience. Yeah. Or, or you or, know, either way. Right. The, either way. The right arbiters away, of your talents. You know, right, right. right away. <laughs> right, you know, especially right. in Britain, whether or not you're being loved or hated. <laughs> right. 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 And uh, this, you have to wait a, a year or so before you find out whether you're loved or hated. 
And uh, plus, you know, if you if you if you're on your own on stand up, you know, you're, you're like Orson Welles. You're you're directing, writing. You're all one guy up there. Uh, and of course, you're the only one to blame if it goes sour. Right. Where uh, where this is so much more of a, of a team effort. It's sort of it's very intimidating. Is that really your voice, by the way? Uh, no, because not at morning? all. No, no. This is a this is all character. I actually, you're doing a character right now. Right now, it's constant. It's constant. <laughs> no, this is yeah. This is from uh, yeah cigarettes and. Uh, and the yelling. And chocolate milk. Uh, yes. In the words and, of Rufus and, Wainwright. And jumping from tenor to bass in the choir when I was a kid. <laughs> Huge uh, mistake. Well, one of your contemporaries, Brent Butt, I'm right. probably a friend of yours, I would imagine. Oh, very much so, uh, yeah. His, his uh, I don't know if you make fun of him and his posters on uh, at CTV. Yeah, but with know. his head, it's actual size. <laughs> Right, yeah, right. Rick has, not, actually has a small head. Yeah, Rick, yeah even though it looks big in the yeah, building. In the yeah. pit, they've had to blow it up. Where with with uh, Butsky, they, they they had to bring it down a third. Butsky, Butsky. You're like hockey players. Yeah, so well, Butsky, his name is Butsky. I don't know. If maybe I've I've let out a secret there. <laughs> what, what's if you meet him on the street? Just what's say, hey, Mercer's Butsky. name? Uh, I don't. We don't right. have one. Right, Rick Mercer. Yeah, uh, okay. Johnny successful. <laughs> Right, right. I was going to say Brent Butt's role in Corner Gas uh, has been uh, wildly successful, of course, and and through the run of that show was the, you might argue, the latest manifestation of the Canadian everyman. And Michael, your character is a different kind of Canadian everyman. Are are, are you and the creators of the foundation trying to subvert the stereotype of Canadians as as nice in some way? I, d- I don't think we we did intentionally, but uh, we do. Uh, uh, we we get that comment a lot. From people saying, you know, we saw the show; it's very un-Canadian, which is not true. Right. You know, we're we're, we're you know, it's we, we can be evil. <laughs> it's just we do it quietly. You know, in 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 little rooms hidden around the nation. <laughs> right. You know, right. like all these corrupt, evil people that are running this country or helping to, uh, just. There's never, evil people running the country? I'm, I'm sure there is. Oh, you yo, you yo, can't yo, run a country oh, without being a tad evil. Right. I, I mean, see. you have to be a no guy. I thought you yes. were actually making a political statement, but oh, then well, it just turned okay, into Okay, I am. I am. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, whoever's running this place is evil. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You're not sure who no, that is. No, I don't know who we it can, is. We can tell you who the you know, the government is. Uh, yeah, I, I don't do. Uh, I work in Britain, so I, I can say Stephen Harper <laughs> till my face turns blue. No one knows who it is. Right, right. I, right. I, I, could, I could say our prime minister was Zorak the Invincible, <laughs> and they'd still uh, they'd even still in the me. empire. They, they they you don't think they're in touch with what's happening in the colony? No one is, and, and including <laughs> most Canadians. <laughs> uh, well, do you think that Canadians should be more in touch with their um, uh, cruel, uh, meaner, angrier, evil side? Sure. <laughs> You don't care about this question. I, no, 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 no. I think uh, I think you should just be in touch with the fact that you know uh, you are, uh, let's say, twenty percent evil. And uh, sure, yeah, get in touch with your inner evil. In other words, to try and make it a serious question, do you think we've done ourselves a disservice as Canadians? And I know you say you live in Britain, but you've, you're a longtime Toronto guy. You've, right. you've, oh, you've yeah. worked in this country for years. Uh, a disservice by by presenting ourselves to ourselves, convincing ourselves that we're nice. Uh, yes. How so? I, I, How do we do I, it? I think service? because it, it, is it legitimately nice, or is it timid? Mm. See, that's where I think I think more Canadians are more timid than nice. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think when you, when you're just nice on the surface, there that means again, when cornered, you you turn into a vicious animal. <laughs> right, right. Well, we I, have... I don't say I don't want us to be Americans where it's you know. Uh, what you does know, an American do in a, well, in a well, corner? Well, depends where you go. Like, look at New York. Uh, it, 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 they start off as 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 uh, mean, and then they warm up to you. <laughs> right, right. Where you, we're the other way around. We're the opposite we, we, we come off as just lovely, right. polite people that slowly, slowly start get to know us needy and yeah. and and, uh, and desperate. Here comes the gravy. One of the reasons why the humor in the foundation is so dark and unexpected is because the target of the satire is a charitable organization. Yes. Why do you think NGOs or charities are, are, are ripe for satire these days? I, I just think, it, I think it's got a lot to do with, uh, you know, uh, celebrities adopting children from far off nations. And just, I think it's, some of it can come off really tacky. And I've done a few uh, big time, uh, celebrities. Uh, big, big, yeah, <laughs> You've big, done. Big, oh, I wish, <laughs> right. I wish anybody. But uh, no, uh, I think I think there's just there's a there's a lot of hypocrisy to it, you know. It's some people just do it to make themselves look good rather than to actually uh, help out. And I've I've been to a lot of these uh, big timey uh, uh, fundraisers and so forth where you know everyone's showing up in limos and and uh, and drinking champagne. Right. And and uh, sometimes it, it it it's it's just 
it's open for ridicule. You're not worried about taking the mickey out of some some organizations that are actually doing good work? Uh, not at all. No. <laughs> I'm sure the work right. still is there. Like right. Even in the show, as, as evil as this guy is, uh, the money does get to who the money's supposed to go to. It, it's the channel right, that, right, right. That, that it took, you know, that, that, that's a little desperate. Do you, do you think Canadians deserve to be teased for being a little earnest? Uh, yes, desperately so. Yeah, I, I enjoy, I love being a Canadian. I, you know, I think it, I, and truly like all Canadians, I know it's the best country in the world. We just don't tell anybody. You know, I, I, I don't know what that is. You know, we know in our hearts that Isn't that a good thing? We're, yes, that we're it's, not it's, it's trumpeting a, it all the time. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good thing, I guess. But at, at the same time, it can't be all roses, can it? There's got to be a, a little bit of nasty out there. Speaking of not all roses, Mike, you you have a predilection. You have an interest, it seems, in swearing in your act. You're known as one of the blue, the blue comedians. Yes, you're not actually blue, but that's no, what they no, call people blue. who well, swear on. Yeah, time. well, uh, yeah, I, I have been. <laughs> you're wearing a jean jacket. I am wearing a yeah. jean jacket. What? What? Uh, tell me about the using embedding this kind of language into your your comedy. I'm, I'm only asking. I mean, everybody does it, but I'm asking you because you're no. I, you know, looking at you, you Google Mike Wilmot, and there's so much about how you're a guy who swears a lot. I know. I know. I think that's overdone. what is that about? I think it's over. I don't think I'm filthy. I don't think I would say anything that I thought was engineered to offend. You know what I mean? I, I, I just say it just comes out that way. It's how I speak the language, I suppose. You know, but uh, I've never considered myself like filthy or a shock comic or, right. you know, and I, I find whenever that you get a poster put up where it's a welcome to the crudest show, Triple X, that, that you're just encouraging like, uh, you know, wife beaters and, and, uh, and oh, evil folks right. to come into the right. show. It's, it's not, it, the, the comedy part is removing the evil from it. You know, making people laugh at stuff that right, I don't right, think they, right, they right. would have thought they'd laugh at. Having on, said on that, is it diff are you are you repressing yourself right now because you're on national radio because you can't swear? Is it difficult for you to do the foundation no. and not be foul mouthed? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not a crazy person. <laughs> I can do both. It's to me, this is the closest I'll get to bilingual. There's the sweary me and the radio not so sweary me. But I'll go outside and I'll curse my head off just to make it. You know, just balance out I'll your yell day. I'll at a cab driver for 25 minutes. I'll be better. Uh, all these years of stand up, now doing a regular. It's funny, you know, Ron James was here last week. He just scored a regular right, well, right, weekly right. Uh, CBC TV show. Good on him. It's yeah, 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 hopefully do well. <laughs> Mr. Adjective. But I mean, you know, he was talking about the lessons he's learning doing this kind of thing after years of, of stand up or being out there. And and it's quite emancipating when you're on stage by yourself, right? You you do whatever you want. Now you right. got now you got a director, you got a whole team around you, you've got writers. What have you learned from this experience so far? I, I think with well, I I did a I try to play as well because I did uh, the Pete Tong thing and I knew that wasn't real acting because it was in a movie. So I tried some real acting where you go out and do a play. That was horrific. <laughs> that was the dumbest, most terrifying thing I've ever done. In what did my you life. do? What was it? A friend of mine, Rich Hall, wrote a, a play called Level Land. Another comedian. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did it in Edinburgh. We did it in uh, Melbourne. We did it in London, and it never got easy. And it was always, always terrifying. Y were you any good? You, uh, you don't think you, it sounds like you didn't do a good job? No, I, I, I think I pulled it off. Yeah, but it never got comfortable. So acting in a film is not real acting. No, it's not real acting. <laughs> Why can, not? If you can make that many mistakes, right. then it, that's not real acting. You mean because you get to retake You get things. to redo it. It's okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm sure you, you'll, you'll get the shot eventually by mistake. Right, right. What about TV? Is that real acting? Nope, no, no. That's not real too. acting they, either. Look, look. Seinfeld got an Emmy. Have you ever watched him? <laughs> he he lips along to others. <laughs> you know, no TV. It's not acting. See, I think the genius of Seinfeld was that he always had that smirk on his face. He was subtly telling us he doesn't act. Yes, you know, yes, he kind of yeah. had a smile on his face, like I'm but, delivering a line right but now. He really, has this one is best me. actor for for that show. <laughs> that that, and you could see actors just cry. I think it's lovely because I love to make actors cry. You got to feel it, it, it feels like you got to be in a good place right now for for Mike Wilmot. You, you, oh, I'm always in a good place. You're always in a good place. I'm, I've, I've I've been doing this. I, if if I wasn't, I wouldn't do it. Uh, you got to find joy. If you if you, you know if you just my whole life is a constant search for joy, and uh, sometimes it's acting. How's that going? Uh, joyful. Not, that's not, good. Not bad. That's not good. bad. And the, the rest of the time, I'm touring the world. How can you not be happy touring the world, telling dirty jokes?
I'm. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here, man. Pleasure uh, to best be here, of luck man. with the foundation. Thanks. Uh, best of luck leaving the room and cussing for a few All minutes to get the, the balance. Stairs. Right? All the way yeah. down the stairs. And uh, you'll see a lot of f- pictures of Rick. There's Mercer, a giant right? one right in the <laughs> right, right in the living room. I mean, right in the lobby. <laughs> right, right. We call it the living well, room. Yeah, it's his living room. <laughs> Mike Wilmot, thanks, sir. Thanks, man. Mike Wilmot, the star of the new Canadian TV show called The Foundation. You can catch it on Showcase. He's been with me here live in Studio Q. Oh.